So let me tell you why I did not even reconsider re-enlisting in the United States Navy after four years of doing intelligence for them. I had endured an immense amount of what they diagnosed me with, which is called MST, meaning military sexual trauma. And that led to a lot of depression, anxiety, panic attacks, and um, PTSD as well. And what that consisted of for me was ever since I joined the military, I was objectified by men and men that had higher ranks than me. I was never objectified by any females that I can recall. So it's not necessarily an attack on men. It's just the whole point of the military sexual trauma. So I lived on Andrews Air Force Base when I worked at the Office of Naval Intelligence in Suitland, Maryland. Andrews Air Force Base is known for having Air Force One, which is the plane that the president flies on outside of DC. And I lived in the barracks there. And I literally had to buy men's basketball shorts to wear because I could not wear regular shorts living on the base because of the cat calling and the harassing. And I told people about it, but you know, boys will be boys. So I lived in this barrack room and I had a roommate named Megan. And the way that the barrack room is set up is there's a walkway. We were on the third floor walkway and then there was a door for my room and then there was a door for my roommate's room. And then back here is the common area, which is the kitchen and the bathroom. So it's shaped like a U, but we each had our own door. And we also had a door to the common area and we also had um, the the chain locks so nobody can enter so I can't enter hers and she can't enter mine okay simple enough and I was very depressed at the time and um, well let me rewind and before the actual incident I used to go visit my father in Glen Cove New York because that's where he was living at the time and it wasn't too far so I would go up for the weekend and I remember one weekend I went to go see my dad and I got a call from Megan frantically at like five, six in the morning, one, one Saturday morning. And she's like, Sarah, Sarah, are you here? Are you here? And I said, no, you know, I'm in New York. And she said, somebody just came into your room. And I was like, oh, okay. And she said, somebody entered my room, went into the common area turned on the light. And I guess she was on the phone late at night with her boyfriend. So she was actually awake. And she said, Sarah, is that you? Because she knew I wasn't there. And whoever this person was got scared, accidentally kicked over a trash can and ran out. Not through her room, but back through my room. And she reported the incident and she was called crazy, insane. What are you talking about? That didn't happen. I know it happened because the chain lock to my common area was undone. You can't undo it from the other side. That's common sense. So she moved out. She's like, I'm not, I'm not, nope, not me. I'm not getting raped. I'm not getting killed. I don't know who the fuck came into your room, but somebody intruded into your room. And by the way, um, it's to enter a room is like a hotel is with a key card. So I don't know how easy it is to get one of those, but I don't think it's that difficult if you know somebody or if you work for the front office for the barracks. So I, I don't know. I mean, what can I do? I just said, oh, oh okay. Um, well, actually, December 10th, I went to sleep at 8 p.m. because I was I was severely depressed at the time. I had um, adjustment disorder and a bunch of other things going on. And I was just very unhappy. And so I went to sleep at 8 p.m. And I woke up at 5 a.m. to a bunch of noise. And 
when I woke up, I, I thought I, uh, I thought it was like gravity knocked something over. And this is important to note because uh, before I had LASIK eye surgery, I used to wear glasses because I sat in front of a computer screen all day for 12 hours plus sometimes. And it really ruined my vision and made me nearsighted. So I used to wear eyeglasses, but anyway, I hear this noise and, and I wake up and I, I okay, so I'm like, okay, whatever. So I just, you know, close my eyes again and then I hear it again. And then I stood up out of my twin size bed in my little barrack room and I looked at the window. There's a window and then there's a door right side by side. Okay. My bed is right in front of the window. And um, the curtains were closed, so I walked up to it, not even really thinking, and I just opened the curtain. And there was, I believe, a man from his body type standing there in full Navy gear. So Navy, Smurf, sweatshirt, sweats, and a black ski mask, which is all prescribed to you while you're in boot camp of uh when you're in great lakes illinois for navy boot camp especially in the winter time they give you a ski mask because it snows a lot out there and my window was already open like maybe yeah maybe like this much it was one of those that go up and down and the screen was off and we just looked at each other stunned and then all of a sudden the only thing i remember is him running off to my left and it was weird because the way he ran off was it looked like slow motion it was like i i don't know why it just looked so slow so i just started yelling hey 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 i i, I didn't know what to do you know and i think at that time i didn't even have a roommate because megan moved out i don't think i got a new roommate yet the first class petty officer that i had spoken to in my chain of command michael guy he said to me he wasn't there to rape you or sexually assault you he was there to steal your computer or tv this is the third floor why wouldn't you steal a laptop from the first like first of all that doesn't make any sense and second of all um you used to hit on me all the time all the damn time and you're married and it just it wouldn't cross your mind that somebody else wouldn't try this you're married with children and in my chain of command and you used to hit on me all the time but this guy just came to steal a big computer this is not even a flat screen computer at the time fuck out of here and then on monday morning um i had to speak to the next person which was a chief and then he questioned me on whether the incident really occurred or not because I wasn't wearing my eyeglasses. He asked me if I could really see. Did Are you sure you saw somebody? No, bitch, I saw a ghost. Like, what does that even mean? My window was open. It was physically, you think I set this up? Why? I don't want attention. Trust me, believe me, I get enough attention here. I don't want any of it. So after that, I had to go speak to the master chief. And I remember this like it was yesterday. I go in there and the master chief takes his fist and slams it down on the desk and says, why the fuck didn't I know about this? And I was sitting there and I felt myself like, um, like slouching and fe like feeling so low and miserable like like I was a dog that just got in trouble for shitting in the house and I I, 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 I didn't even know what to say I'm like I use a chain of command I, I don't go to the master chief I go to the first class petty officer and then he goes to the chief and then he goes to the master chief like I've only been in a couple years that I understand this I don't know why you don't understand this and so Nothing was done about it. I kept going to JAG, which is like the attorney for the, the command I was at. 
I kept trying to make people aware of this problem. Not just me, but also Megan, who at this point lived off base in a very expensive apartment that had security because she could not trust the military to keep her safe. So you guys in the military expect us to go overseas and we're supposed to think that you're gonna protect us but you can't protect us on our own military front. You can't protect us from the predators on the base. So Megan and I tried for a long time to get attention to this issue. And all we had asked for was put some damn cameras in the barracks. This is not the first time it's happened. It happens twice to my room. And there had been rumors that it's happened with other girls, but there was just no accountability and nobody wants to deal with the problems. They never do. So that's, um, it was a really long fight and I can't say that I won when whatever they, I eventually was permitted to live off of base and I moved into another secure apartment complex that had a gated entry and all that fun stuff. And um, now, um, I mean, that's why I did not stay in the military because I feel like all women do get sexually harassed at one point or another in the military, but if they find you to be a little more vulnerable, you might get it a little more. And it just gets swept under the rug. So I get anxiety a lot. I, um, I do have a stun gun with me all the time. Um, I do have mace. Luckily, I've never actually had to use it, but I do keep it around. And, um, I'm very weird about people coming into my home. I'm very weird about people seeing where I park. Um, I remember in my last apartment, there was, um, this, uh, this uh, maintenance guy that came in and he asked me out and it just sucks because it's like, you don't want to be mean because you don't know if they're going to retaliate, but then you also don't want to be nice because then you don't know if they're going to misunderstand your, uh, intentions. And he had asked me out and I was just like, I'm sorry. I, I don't date people where I live. I went and I bought another lock for my door because in my mind, this guy can enter my fucking house at any time. And although it's not necessarily likely, I think anything can happen, you know, and even if I'm going somewhere or if I'm going home and there's people across the street and they're watching me, if there's, if it's guys, I literally like, nope, I'm doing a detour. I'm not going into my apartment until I see that you guys are not out there because I don't want people to know where I live. And back to this maintenance guy, his name is Ben. He was a nice guy, but it was completely inappropriate. Um, and he was much older as well. I remember one time I was talking to Kate and he had to, he called and he said he had to come check something. And I was having a, like almost a panic attack talking to Kate. Cause I was like, I can't, I can't be here. I don't, I don't, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. He's going to come in. He's going to hit on me. And this is a big guy and um, so I, I left the apartment and I just told him, let yourself in. But it's like a situation like that, like who am I going to complain to? Did he actually do anything wrong? I mean, yeah, but... It's like, if I go report it, then is that going to cause more or less problems for me? Is he going to retaliate? You know, all that stuff. And mind you, till today, I don't know who it was that broke into my apartment. 
So this is why women don't come forward. We can lose our jobs. We cannot get promoted. We are looked at as the person who asked for it. I mean, look, the list goes on and on. This is why women don't come forward.